Tjena, tjena Pontus. Hur är läget? Hello. Hello everybody. <clears throat> Um, Drew, uh, will the Cavill Space Marine piece be available as a art print? Perhaps. Good question. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Why would you be interested? All right. Well, I hope that you all um, had so far a fantastic week. Yeah, you would. Okay, Drew. Well, uh, yeah, perhaps. Um, I mean, I wouldn't... Uh, if I put it up, it uh, wouldn't be uh, uh, for as a print uh, since I, it's fan art, so I cannot... I cannot and I should... Well, I, I could, but I shouldn't, and I will not. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, how do you say? Um, sell fan art. Uh, so, if anything, I would uh, re-upload my free f uh, 40k fan art uh, files uh, that you can download and uh, print on your own. So, in case. Uh, you didn't know I have that on my uh, R station um, store, so I have uh, two. Um, how do you say bundles of uh, downloadable uh, files of my fan art that are like uh, very high resolution for printing, so you just download them for free, and uh, you can just go and print them on your own. So, so yeah. If anything, I will put them. I will put it available uh, like that. <clears throat> uh, Juan Toledano. Good evening, Miguel and company. Hello, Juan. How are you doing? Welcome. Uh, Pontus, it's good. Taking easy. Henry is looking cool. Thank you. Thank you, man. How how is the sleeping going, Pontus? Uh, can are you having luck in that regard, or or not so much? <clears throat> okay, so. Um, Like lately, uh, with each stream, I will um, I will start by saying that uh, yeah, I didn't have any time to work on this uh, because I'm extremely busy uh, with several projects at the same time, and um, on the f little little time that I have uh, left, uh, I'm continuing uh, working on the tutorials for how to paint space marines <clears throat> and uh, thankfully uh, as i was mentioning last time it is actually moving pretty fast forward um, so yes i'm recording now uh, <clears throat> the the voice for it so i'm almost done with episode two and and um, we'll start uh, very soon with episode three so yeah, uh, very happy with it. All right, just let me also as well to uh, record this whole thing. Uh, there you go. Luis Ramon, hi Miguel, a pleasure to see you. Your Cavill Space Marine is awesome. 
how are you? I'm posting my last car vehicle design in my portfolio. Well, like always, Luis, uh, uh, very glad to see you around here. Welcome. Uh, I'm fine. Uh, <clears throat> doing fine. As I was saying, very, very busy. On top of everything, uh, this uh, I started with my class again this term, so that's adding an extra layer of <laughs> busyness uh, on top of everything else. But as as always, it's uh, super fun and uh, and I enjoy it uh, quite a lot. So it's it's fun, it's it's great and uh, fantastic. I I will take a look about that uh, with that car for sure. Pontus, uh, we are pretty lucky this time around. Still tired, of course. Oh, yeah, of course, but great to hear. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a big plus. Um, Commander Dante is starting to <clears throat> ease in, in that regard and uh, sleeping uh, is getting better and better. So that is that is nice. We still don't get full um, rest and sleep, but it's, uh, yeah, dramatically improved. <laughs> so enough that we are not dead every day, <laughs> uh, but at least we can sleep something. So that's something. <laughs> Albert, hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. I'm still <clears throat> struggling a little bit with the volumes here. Uh, let me just flip the canvas. so I can spot the problem a little bit easier. So here it's supposed to be the center. Yeah, this part should be slightly more open here, I think. Yeah, another thing, for example, on top of everything that I'm doing, <coughs> I'm con I'm also um, expanding on my research for my project, um, and um, I'm learning quite some pretty interesting things that I hopefully can apply to my projects. And I cannot, I don't want to say uh, more um, yet, uh, so I don't, I don't want to give away hints. Uh, uh, but yeah, super interesting things. I, I'm at least something that I can say uh, now is that part of the the project is gonna be to a certain degree. I mean, it's not gonna be hardcore, but it's gonna be grounded uh, to things look believable and grounded in uh, with certain level of realism, or at least uh, that it feels believable. Um, uh, it's sci-fi. So I'm, I'm trying to do my best to do a little bit of research uh, with these type of things. Uh, <clears throat> uh, 
And um, yeah, so through that process, I'm learning quite a lot of in very interesting things. Um, Um, David, or, or the, well, it's in Spanish, so David, <laughs> perdón. Me encanta tu trabajo, muy fan de tus portadas de los códex de mines espaciales. Muchas gracias, muchas gracias, y bienvenido al stream. Um, so, yes, what was I doing? Ah, yes, the, um, trying to fix slightly these um <clears throat> the volumes here funny enough um, um since i was talking about the tutorial about how to paint space marines um, now i'm uh, recording the uh, the episode dedicated to uh, volumes uh, uh, how to represent uh, the volumes of the Space Marine armor properly uh, because it's extremely tricky uh, to do uh, well and uh, yeah so I'm talking a lot about uh, things to avoid and things to uh, take in consideration and yeah so it's always kind of funny to <clears throat> uh, since I have it very m present now in my head since I'm recording everything now <clears throat> So just going through the process at the same time <laughs> at in this space marine. So kind of funny. Oh my goodness, pick the color. There we go. And lately, I I feel so frustrated because there is so many things going on that I would die to talk about it uh, with you guys, but still I, I cannot. Uh, so I'm consciously uh, um, I don't know if you can, if you say this in English, but at least I'm translated from Spanish. But I'm biting my tongue. Uh, to not say uh, or talk about these things but yeah a uh, lot of very exciting things uh, going on uh, work-wise uh, from client work stuff and uh, but also about my projects uh, and other things uh, for my youtube channel as well Uh, Diego, I, I was watching honest trailers of season two of The Witcher and they make fun of him mentioning Warhammer in every chance possible. <laughs> really? I, I haven't seen it. I, I will check it up. Uh, they, uh, David, can't wait to see your next project. Uh... Yeah, and I cannot wait to show you guys. <laughs> the one that I'm, I'm so hyped is my uh, personal project. Um, let's see how long it takes me just to f 
to finalize the, the tutorial so I can dive deep with my projects and uh, and really just yeah make it public and everything and, and and make you also part of it that's also part of my uh intention with the patreon as well so so yeah we'll see <clears throat> as i as i was say all as i say always uh my project is very ambitious and I have very uh, many big plans, but of course, anything you need to start little step by little step. And uh, but yeah, uh, it is a very ambitious project with a lot of things in mind. But yeah, it might take a very long time. Uh, but yes, you need to start somewhere, and uh, hopefully, I can make you for those of you that are interested i can make you part of the process as well so that's also one part that i think uh, i want to make it interesting in that way uh, kind of the <clears throat> um, well actually it would be interesting to see um, to hear uh, your thoughts so your feedback here it's very very much appreciated so one aspect that I have for my project or how to uh, focus it uh, in regards to you um, is that I have this idea that um, as I'm saying, it's very ambitious projects, and um, so I have very, very big plans for it. But of course, it may never happen, and and just and completely fail. But at least it's very ambitious. So with that in mind, it's a little bit the concept of imagine that you, as a uh, general public, right? <laughs> uh, you are a fan of uh, science fiction, of uh, concept art and all these type of things, but mainly science fiction. And that you could say that you were there from the very beginning when Star Wars was being created, from the very, very beginning. And you were an, intri uh, an in, in, what's the word in English? Intrinsic part of the process right by contributing to 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 that universe uh, to to be part of it would you be interested on something like that if that would have been possible right of course i'm i'm not trying to compare my i mean i, I know it, it might sound a little bit pretentious comparing my uh, my project to uh, but as i said I, i'm trying to be very ambitious if things just yeah, shooting for the sky, right? And if I get uh, only two meters <laughs> high, well, that <laughs> that's where I get. Uh, but at least I'm I'm, I'm aiming uh, high, right? So if you could say that you were part of, let's say, Star Wars uh, uh, happening, and after the decades, you could say. I was there uh, from the very beginning and it happened thanks to me uh, in some part. Uh, wouldn't that be, if you had the possibility by then, wouldn't you think that that's something uh, cool? I think I, I think it, I myself, I think that would be nice. Um, so that's kind of a little bit, uh, a little bit of the scope that I'm trying to uh, put my projects uh, as well uh, in regard to, um, uh, crowdfunding <clears throat> because it's gonna be that way it's not just uh, words but uh, but yeah I 
I don't know. I, I think I would feel uh, feel very proud to to be able to say that. Yeah, I was part of of something like that, and even though it wasn't me exactly creating it, but it it happened thanks to my support and and my contribution to it. Uh, and my plan, of course, is just to uh, reflect that uh, as well. Uh, so I'm I'm very much uh, planning and envisioning to honor that uh, contribution. Um, and that is really shown and it's public that contribution for the future so and uh, david de luca hola miguel how are you doing love the way the painting is shape, uh, taking place thanks uh, david and welcome like always uh, fantastic to have you here <coughs> Uh, Pontus, uh, yeah, that makes sense. If you want, I can help uh, looking at your tutorials before you post them to check uh, for errors. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Pontus. Pontus, yes. Um, that would be nice uh, because yeah, there is uh, they are uh, pretty long and. Uh, it, um, I mean, at least from my experience, I know uh, there are, you can do plenty of errors and stuff like that. So, yes, thanks, man. I will poke you uh, when I need it. Uh, Lucius, uh, when the tutorials come out, I will paint a space marine. If it turns out bad, I will know exactly who to blame. <laughs> Not me, uh, not me. Uh, you can't blame uh, that you inspired yourself on uh, the Space Marine film, and that's about it. By the way, Lucy, is a pretty cool post, uh, the latest thing that you uh, you posted, uh, the character. Uh, David, I often use your art as a reference when working on my own projects, especially when it comes to light and volume. Space Marines and hard surfaces in general are very hard. Okay, well, I'm not, not sure what to say really, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I always don't know what to say with uh, <clears throat> when, th um, when you guys say things like that, uh, but... But yeah, I'm honored. I I don't know. I don't know what to say. But <laughs> uh, I hope that at least is useful. Uh, um, and yeah, and I totally agree with uh, the Space Marines and their armor. And it's one of the most challenging things uh, um, to do, in my opinion. I don't know from any type of... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, fictional character I, I find space marines uh, very tricky and I always struggle I and I have done so many already and I, I'm, it's always a struggle in the sense that I if I don't pay attention I am going to do so many errors and even paying attention I still do quite many errors uh, so yeah, it's it's kind of a love hate relation, me and my space marines, because I I love doing them, um, but at the same time, I'm never satisfied uh, with what I do because I'm always spotting uh, problems and issues with them, and yeah, so. But hopefully with my tutorial, uh, I will make things easier for everybody. I honestly think that it's, it's going to be useful because I'm going into a lot of details. Not so much like on a technical level of like, this is how you paint a, spe uh, you know, uh, like a formula or into... This is how to draw the volume of a space marine, you know, you or like a face. With a six and a four and a zero, you have a, you know, 
uh, it's more complicated. Uh, so it's more general uh, guidelines of uh, things to have uh, <coughs> to take uh, in consideration, to take uh, care and and be careful with, <coughs> and um, yes, things of of that sort. But still, I it's very much in depth. As I said, it's uh, many many. Mm, I don't know. For now, I think it's uh, over three hours. Uh, everything that I'm doing so far, and I think it's gonna be longer than that. So yes. Me mm. blurred. Hello, hello. Welcome to the stream. Diego, how do you manage your time to have some left to work on your stuff without dying in the process? Well, a uh, very good question. I don't know and I uh, and I don't manage. Uh, that's the problem I'm having lately. Uh, <clears throat> and one of the challenges that I am trying to prepare in advance for my own projects. So the day only has 24 hours and I need my sleep. Uh, and I have a family uh, and, you know, so I have a limited amount of time. So that means that and that in order to uh, work on my projects, it means that I need to take away time from my paid uh, work for clients to dedicate on, on, on my own projects. Uh, so that's also one of the reasons why the, these uh, tutorial on how to paint space marines is taking me more than a year now uh, more than a yeah year and a half or maybe not so much but uh, getting there uh, because I I don't have the time so and it's so so much content so yeah so that's why <clears throat> I'm gonna have to rely on the um, on crowdfunding so at least since the the bills are gonna still be there and i need to pay my bills uh, so if i have to uh, take away um, or not work on client or paid work uh, from clients uh, i would need to get at least something uh, from somewhere else hopefully uh, crowdfunding can help so i can um, I can spend a little bit of uh, time uh, and quality time uh, with my project. So we'll see, uh, finger crossed uh, that people will find it interesting enough to support me to some degree. <clears throat> and um, of course, I'm not ex expecting to, to manage to completely um, fill the void of paid work, uh, but at least uh, even if it helps a tiny bit, uh, if I can manage to uh, to to get enough uh, time to to work one day per week, we'll, we'll see. I mean, I would love to spend as much time as possible, but everything will depend on how good uh, the crowdfunding uh, campaign goes with Patreon. Um, so yeah, we'll see. So yeah, it's it's, it's a big struggle. Um, One of the things that I do uh, is at least to if it's o if I only if I can spare only half an hour a day, I still use that half an hour. And even though it's not much, it start it start to pile up and and it is something and it, it's more than than uh, zero. So at least I, I I try my best to 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 find. Uh, a little time to to do um, something on, on the side. If I'm very busy with the client work, sometimes it's a little bit less uh, busy, and then it's not such a big issue, of course.
but I, the, the more time passes, uh, the more I feel the need of uh, having to do my own stuff. Um, it's a matter of uh, survival as an artist. In my case, I, I, I yes. Uh, and uh, even though in, in the latest years, I've been extremely, extremely, uh, um, um, how do you say, privileged uh, with the uh, projects that I've been working, um, uh, client work. And I'm still uh, yeah, extremely, extremely, um, uh, that's how I feel privileged, uh, for example, or working with uh, with the guys at Fat Shark and Dark Tide. Uh, it's, as, an, uh, as I mentioned many, many, many times, it's an absolute dream uh, uh, project uh, to be in. So I've been very, very lucky uh, in that regard. But still, I, I need to do my own thing. Um, and also that's one of the reasons why I've been so um, um, slow with the, the character for uh, Mr. Cavill because I, I only have um, the time during the stream to work on it and of course I'm very much distracted as well uh, talking to you guys and uh, um, and, and that plays a, a big role as well of uh, making things slower um, for the case of this um, this character is illustration um, if I work on my own I'm way way faster than I am uh, on stream because I'm very unfocused you know it's uh, Which, by the way, now it reminds me, I think it was Peter that um, um, shared on the Discord server that apparently uh, on, a, um, uh, on an interview that uh, Henry Cavill had about uh, Warhammer, his favorite chapter of Space Marines is the Blood Angels. So, lucky me, I chose uh, appropriately. So I'm pretty happy about that. And uh, from that short interview, it really shows that he knows his uh, stuff about Warhammer uh, 40k. Uh, that he's not bluffing uh, when he says that he likes 40k and uh, he... He's into the hobby. Uh, he makes some comments that really, really uh, show that that he knows. <laughs> uh, Jacob, hey Jacob, uh, how are you doing? Uh, can you talk a little uh, about how to get the first gig as an illustrator for Games Workshop, for example? What do you need to show and what to master? Okay, so of course, uh, what I'm gonna, what I can say is my opinion. I, I am not an employee of Games Workshop, and I'm. I don't know exactly how they work inside and what they are looking for. And um, I would guess as well that uh, the things that they are looking for uh, depends uh, from time to time. But okay, so... How to get a gig or a f first gig as an illustrator for Games Workshop is difficult to say, really, because, uh, for example, in my case, they contacted me, um, so I didn't have to do much. But as far as I understand, n nowadays they are putting some uh, public tests um, from time to time on their webpage. So you enter a process of, se of sele a selection process 
uh, by doing some tests and uh, if you are good enough then hopefully you will get uh, contracted uh, by them uh, or hired uh, by them so that seems to be the most straightforward uh, way of uh, working for them uh, nowadays I think um, And then in terms of what they are looking for, well, um, again, I cannot speak for them, but, uh, oops, sorry. But my guess is that uh, what they will be looking for is, well, in one hand, of course, a very high uh, technical level, uh, artistic, artistic level. So you have uh, uh, um, an... Um, minimum uh, level of mastery of the fundamentals of art, right? So, the, the so you can uh, <clears throat> paint uh, or draw with without no problem and anything really, right? So, so you are a good artist technically, but then uh, that you have a good sense of. Uh, of uh, of narrative right that you can say things with your illustrations you are not just reproducing uh badass guys uh with armor but you can say something you know that you can tell stories through your illustrations and that you have certain capacity to suggest and to evoke things to the audience through your art um i think that's a very very big plus uh, uh and i'm sure that that's something that they would uh immensely appreciate so yeah that's what i can say uh, that comes to mind uh, just like that because i mean just to um reiterate a little bit in, into this topic sometimes people focus too much into all right so since let's say they have space marines in in their line of work then i'm gonna show them that i can do space marines and people just uh, try to <clears throat> do space marines as a you know reproducing in some way as if you are a robot you know like okay i can't paint a space marine but they fail to understand that, yeah, sure, of course, you need to understand how to uh, portrait uh, correctly a space marine. But at the same time, you need to be able to uh, create certain response into the audience with that space marine. So it's not just about illustrating a space marine, but just maybe creating a character that is... Um, that can tell a story or a mood or something uh, uh, through that character or scene or whatever. So you need to be a good storyteller um, as an artist. So you, you have to be not only a good artist, but a good illustrator. Does it make sense what I'm saying? But again, that's my guess. Uh, I cannot speak for them, so but that's that's my guess. A good, also another tip that I can give you is that uh, normally a good indicator of the things that you need to achieve is just take as a um, uh, level of references of reference the work that they are publishing right uh, look at the artists that are look, uh, working for them and then you are gonna see what is the bar that you need to reach in order to work for them that that's gonna be a good indicator uh, to tell you if you think you are uh, there or you still have to uh, to work a little bit more to reach uh, uh, a higher level And also to aim 
to something uh, uh, similar as well so as a as a reference. Uh, <clears throat> Ulysses, thanks, appreciate it. Not sure if it's a winner, but learn a lot from working on it at least. Well, Lucius, that's the most important. And especially if you enjoy the process, that's uh that's uh that's priceless. Uh and and again, it it's cool. Uh so yes. <laughs> Imperial Andrew, magnifico, espectacular. Thank you. Oh, eh, or sorry, uh, gracias. <laughs> uh, Luis, uh, more I listen about your personal project, more I'm interested in it. Uh, I mean, I love, I love sci-fi, and absolutely love the Star Wars vibes in sci-fi. Uh, sincerely, taking part in your journey would be fantastic. Well, that's uh, very. Makes me very happy to hear, Luis. Uh, uh, but as I'm, I have said uh, previously, just wait and s to see, and then, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we can talk uh, uh, by then. And I, uh, and I don't know. Just uh, so there is no um, confusion. Um, my project is not. I wouldn't say that is. I wouldn't compare with uh, Star Wars uh, in terms of what it is about. Still, there is gonna, be, you could say there's maybe a certain part of inspiration in uh, from an aesthetical point of view, to some degree. I mean, very slight. It's, it's there's gonna be a lot of merging uh, inspiration from many different ties. Uh, I will. When the time comes, I will very openly talk about it, uh, about the process of everything. So that's going to be also part of the the aim <clears throat> of the, the crowdfunding. Uh, so really, really uh, go through the process and be very transparent about it. Uh, but no, I was mentioning in terms of the uh, the the success of Star Wars right now, right? So uh, if you could look back and say that, well, I was there, you know, and it happened thanks to me, and you can see on the credits, my name is there still, right? So I think that that could be a cool um, way to um, to what's the word? to focus the, the, the crowdfunding. And uh, yeah, so that's why I mentioned Star Wars. And again, uh, I know it might sound a bit pretentious since my project is uh, nothing uh, yet or very, 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 very little. Uh, so just to, uh, yeah. <laughs> but still, like I said, uh, I have big plans. And if, uh, so I'm aiming to the stars and if I just uh, reach uh, only four meters high, <laughs> then well, uh, shame, but at least I, I tried it. So, yes. But it doesn't hurt to dream uh, big, so. <laughs> And yeah, I hope that many of you think that honest, honestly, when I presented that uh, you find it interesting and appealing and uh, yeah, and I, I think it, it's, uh, it's very cool project. Very, very, very cool. Uh, that's why I'm doing it, of course. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it is a little bit. I don't know if you have seen this um, uh, talk that uh, Stanley made in some um, <clears throat> convention or something. Uh, 
and he was talking about following your dreams uh, in terms of if you think if you have an idea that you think that you believe you you that it's a, a very good idea just go for it if you truly truly feel that it is it is a very good idea you should go for it and that's how i feel about my project it's not just a random thing it's i feel very strongly that this is a very very good thing um, i just need to do it <laughs> only <laughs> uh, but yeah Uh, Diego, thank you. Well, my pleasure. Uh, I'm here to answer questions and uh, among other things. So, yeah, my, my absolute pleasure. Pontus, yeah, that's amazing. He good, good test. Yes, yes. I agree. Uh, uh, dark, in uh, dark, dark angels. Uh, Blood angels are very cool. Dark angels as well, but yeah, I like uh, blood angels. <clears throat> uh, David, can you tell us a bit about how you started working I with Games Workshop? Were you a fan of Warhammer 40k before working with them? Ooh, <laughs> the codex covers are impeccable. Uh, was it an easy process or? too many versions well yes i can of course i can talk about it and if i was a fan of 40k before working with them i am a fan of 40k since i was 10 years old and i'm 40 and uh, i'm a huge fan and uh, yes and I've been fan of all the aspects of the hobby, from an extremely competitive player um, that was during the huh, which edition would that be? It was around the two thousand um, two thousand. Yeah, around the 2000s, early 2000s. I was going to a lot of uh, tournaments and I was actually very good, very competitive, but always I had a, a golden rule, which was like, okay, yes, I'm extremely competitive. I'm trying to find the, the most competitive uh, army list, but I will not go against the lore of the army so i will not make these strange combinations because they are meta just for the sake of winning i will try to be respectful with the lore and that it makes sense and, and fits with with the army and uh, you still can be extremely competitive it's not just about the list it's about how to play and i won many tournaments uh, with in that way so yes player collectionist uh, painter of miniatures a modder as well uh, before it, it it became so pr um, 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 how do you say uh, widespread now uh, that now it is so so much um, um, people uh, into uh, trans making transformations and, and, and modding miniatures and stuff like that. So before it was uh, uh, so um, widespread. Um, so yes, and I'm an avid uh, consumer of lore. That's one of the aspects that has always um, attract me, attracted me the most uh, from Warhammer 40k and still also from fantasy, but... Uh, um, it's actually funny enough, uh, uh, going back to this interview of uh, Henry Cavill, uh, he was mentioning that when he was a kid, he, he was this kid that uh, uh, bought many uh, army books and rule books of uh, Warhammer uh, Fantasy and never played it 
because he had no, nobody to play with. Uh, but he re uh, read everything. Uh, that was exactly me as well. <laughs> I, n I, uh, yeah, I, I never had the chance to really play uh, fantasy, even though I collected one miniature here and there. I mean, of course, being a kid, you, yeah, you could not. I could not afford it, but, um, but yeah. So yeah, that was kind of funny uh, to hear uh, the similarity in experience. Uh, but yeah, I always been uh, my absolute favorite is always been uh, 40k. Um, so yeah. So <clears throat> when they contacted me uh, to work with them, it was uh, a dream come true since I was a kid. So yes. And uh, with the codex uh, covers, if you are referring to the to the supplements of the Space Marines, uh, that was kind of a pretty straightforward uh, process, really. Um, <clears throat> there were not too many iterations, uh, so that was uh, pretty easy. Um, yeah, uh, very few uh, feedback rounds, still, of course, some, but. Uh, but yeah, was uh, pretty easy. And in general, I have to say that my experience working with uh, Games Workshop is uh, uh, a delight uh, in terms of it is, they are so, uh, they are great to work with. Um, yes. Rodslag, will you hand this Cavill Space Marine art over to him in the future as a gift? Or what are you going to do with it when it's finished? Um, well, that's, uh, yes, that I would absolutely love to do that. Um, so yes, I, I definitely uh, would love to uh, give give it to him as a, as a, a gift. The problem is how to do it. Uh, once it's finished, I, yeah, how to reach such a um, famous person, right? Uh, the, I have no idea. I would hope and uh, that um, through social media, people can help me to do noise and to reach him because otherwise I have absolutely no idea how to, how to reach him. Um, but yeah, I would love to, and uh, hopefully he he would like it. Uh, so yeah. Leo, is there any chance you could talk about rates without saying yours, of course? But I have heard that some guys. Uh, charge at least 100 100 watts is that what is dlls S sorry i might sound uh, uh, like uh, stupid but i i'm is that dollars <clears throat> uh dollars all right so i have heard some guys charge at least 100 dollars an hour so how rates in numbers have you seen the most well it depends quite a lot uh, because are you talking what are you talking about <laughs> sorry in terms of uh, illustration or concept art because it's a little bit different uh, but uh, but then regardless um, it it depends also uh, quite a lot uh, <clears throat> on the the artist uh, uh, the experience of the artist the the project the client uh, the scope of uh, of of the work what is it for um, 
So it, it depends quite a lot. And uh, $100 uh, per hour, it could be, uh, it could be depending once again um, who, where, and for what. So for in general terms, uh, for clients that are in the United States, the rates are generally higher than in Europe, for uh, for instance, and uh, way, way uh, higher than in other places um, as well. So yeah, um, somebody that is a senior or experienced could be in concept art, could definitely charge $100 an hour or even more. Uh, so yeah. That is uh, that is not uh, so uh, outlandish at all. It's on the higher end, um, for sure. That's not like uh, just to to give a little bit of scope. So as I, I'm saying, that would be more some somebody with uh, with experience and uh, and uh, and very skilled. So again, we are uh, talking about higher-end uh, uh, artists. Um, but again, it, it also, as I was saying, it would depend on the type of project, right? So it's not the same, like a very tiny indie project uh, by uh, indie developer that has a very <clears throat> a limited uh, budget than to work for a, I don't know, uh, a big uh, film production in Hollywood, right? So it's not, you wouldn't charge the same. So, yeah. And then, for example, rates uh, from illustration and uh, Concept art varied uh, also as well. Fission, thanks for the follow. Thank you, much appreciated. Welcome to the stream. <clears throat> so I hope that this give you, I mean, a uh, very general idea. I know it's very vague, so yeah, I, do, I don't know really what to say because again, it depends quite a lot of these factors. Seniority or experience, skills, of course, because, yeah, I mean, you might be have uh, been working for a long time in the industry, but maybe you are still not that good, right? So they are not going to pay you the same as somebody that is uh, very good. So, yeah, so there is all these factors and it's a combination of all of, of, all of them. And also as well, also there is this other uh, factor that is how good uh, you are at negotiating uh, as well right uh, that's also like anything in life right so but if if there is something very clear and that you should be very aware is that you need always 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 to value your work and never never uh, charge or be competitive on the cheap don't try to be hired by being cheap value your work because not because most probably it still is not gonna help you uh, and you are not only hurting yourself, but you are hurting the whole, uh, uh, um, the whole, um, um, what's the word? Uh, well, the whole community of artists, uh, as well. But let's say that you don't care about others. It's just about you then you are doing yourself a disservice as well. Um, because they might be hiring you 
there but then you are not still on the cheap still you probably are not gonna um meet their expectations um uh, because you are just selling yourself as not good uh not uh, because you are not valuing yourself right so you are already marketing yourself in a in a bad way and not only that but you are missing the chance of really working for what you are worth uh, <clears throat> so and and the thing is also as well that there is work there's so much work so um you shouldn't be afraid of charging what um uh, i mean what is what you are worth for the fear that you, you they're gonna hire somebody else because it's cheaper uh, it doesn't work that way so just be a good artist and uh, and charge what you are worth or what you think you are worth uh, being sensible and, and and trying to be as objective as possible of course uh, because also those type of things uh, shows right if you are a completely junior and don't have much experience and you are asking to be charged as somebody with uh, many 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 years of experience and really knows what they are doing right so <coughs> it, it yeah that wouldn't be good uh, either so also another general thing to to have in mind for instance is always uh, charge uh, prices of the mm, according to the location of where the the client is uh, especially um, going on the high end right in terms like let's say that you live in russia so i so the the cost of living in Russia are going to be way lower than in in Los Angeles, right? But you are going to be hired by a a company a studio in Los Angeles, okay? So you shouldn't be charging uh, a rate according to the living standards of Russia where you are living. You should be charging accordingly to the 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 rates of los angeles uh, that's how you should do it and if you do it uh the other way around thinking that yeah but so again you are selling yourself on the cheap uh then well you are doing it wrong because instead of paying you uh, i don't know what would be the difference but just for the sake of the example instead of paying you five times uh, what you are worth then you are getting a tiny amount so yeah Andreas that's for the subscription thank you thank you and always like uh, I like to well I mean <laughs> I feel a little bit silly about this but uh uh since uh, i don't get so many subscriptions uh, through uh, that happens in in the middle of the of the stream uh, that tiny um uh, animation i did myself yeah i know it sounds very <laughs> silly <laughs> but uh yeah it's uh i had so much so big plans for uh things like that but it's i I have many other um, animations uh, that work in progress uh, for other things. Um, but uh, yeah, lack of time. Everything the themed space pirates, of course, again, hinting at my uh, personal project, my sci-fi project. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Uh, Jacob, um, thanks for the reply. Great advice. Sorry, I missed the beginning of the stream. Uh, what tutorial were you talking about? 
are you working on one um well you're welcome and uh, yes i'm i'm talking well i think i was talking about uh, a tutorial that uh, is being on the making for uh, a year and a half <laughs> Uh, which is uh, pure madness um, about how to paint and draw space marines. Um, so it's a, a very uh, in-depth uh, tutorial uh, about that, about this niche and nerdy uh, topic of uh, <laughs> painting space marines. <laughs> you know, some other people are spending time trying to cure cancer. I'm spending my time making a tutorial of how to paint space marines. <laughs> uh, Cantabrian, hey Miguel, good evening. Hello Cantabrian, welcome. How are you doing, man? David, I do the same. I love competitive play, but lore comes first good always always that's how it should be uh it it always uh, annoyed me so much this type of uh lists i i and to be honest it has been uh quite many years since i haven't played um but uh, <clears throat> and i haven't played this uh latest edition so i don't know how things uh, are done now but it always always um um I know me quite a lot these lists where they don't make any sense uh, lore wise uh, regardless of how good they work on the on the tip on the game and once again uh, you can be i mean with limitations but still you can be com play competitive and still be respectful of the lore <clears throat> so as anything it just it, it it everything of course the lists and rules can uh, play a big role and help or give advantages but uh, regardless of those advantages if uh, you don't know how to play and i mean be good at it uh, doesn't matter so yeah and for instance, I mean, as I said, I was extremely competitive and always wanted to really uh, win. But the thing is, I, I, I'm I such a fan of the lore itself that just I I have never been really sore uh, by losing um, any match or anything because I always saw like a small movie of each uh, game. Uh, so it, it has never, ever bothered me to, to lose any game. Uh, even as competitive as I am uh, or I used to be uh, playing I mean Pontus here by the way um, on the chat I mean he hasn't seen me uh, on that pier where I used to go to tournaments because that was when I uh, used to live in Spain but um, we used to work together and uh, on the office we used to have a, a big uh, group of people that uh, we used to play um, two editions back and he has seen me in the uh, plane uh, and I think he can testify that um, that I used to be um, pretty good I rarely lost. <laughs> Pontus, too competitive. I don't think anyone ever beat Miguel uh, when we played. Ah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I was just speaking here and I didn't see uh, this. Yeah, there <laughs> I feel it should have happened by the like of the dice someday, but it never did. Yeah, I. What can I say? I, at least on the previous editions, I, 
I yeah, I was pretty good. I don't know. <laughs> By the way, Pontus, I I do you still uh collecting your uh orcs uh, army? Hey Olivier, hey, uh, sorry Philippe, I, again, uh, I made the mistake. How nice to see you around. Uh, yes, I, I stream every Tuesday, so, so yeah, uh, for the chat here, uh, Philippe is one of my students uh, uh, during this term that started uh, last week uh, of my course. Um, so, yes. So, yeah, uh, a great surprise to have you here, uh, Philip. Or, sorry, Philip. You are French. Excuse moi. Uh, David, I wonder if you apply your artistic style also to painting miniatures. No, I did. I I don't. Well, or I did. I didn't used to. Uh, and I'm saying in past because I don't have the time to paint anymore. Even though I would love to. Maybe now that uh, with uh, Commander Dante, when he grows up uh, a little bit more, I can get back to it and we can paint together. Commander Dante is my son, by the way. Uh, we call him like that because his real name is Dante. So that's why. <clears throat> but uh, yes, so maybe we, yeah, I can introduce him to, uh, to, uh, to the hobby. Uh, that would be awesome. But I, uh, it will take some time yet. He's very, very young still. So. Let's do something here with the head. Pontus, don't worry, I will just call Henry for you. Oh, really? W would you do that, Pontus? Do you have his, uh, you have a direct line uh, <laughs> with him? Yes, if you do, please, uh, please, uh, please do. <laughs> that will be another awesome surprise. Uh, second one in, in, in a few months, <laughs> Pontus. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> David, I can say from my experience that in the world of video games, salaries are higher and a senior artist can chart that perfectly. Uh, yes, yes, exactly. Um, 
yes uh, from my experience is the same um uh, you can earn uh, way more uh, as a concept artist than as as an illustrator and i mean that uh, to be fair as well my professional professional experience as an illustrator is limited uh because i only been working as such since i started freelancing um four and a years uh, four and a half years ago and it's been very limited to this type of um of work right uh, <clears throat> or um tabletop games and stuff uh, like that uh, maybe for all the type of illustration gigs uh, uh, it's uh, uh, better paid um, so yeah but I, I I would say that this part of the of the um, industry so to speak is uh, is not that well paid uh, I, I have to say it, uh, honestly um, not for really what it's uh, really worth in my opinion and yeah Fission, hello, amazing art, dude. Thank you, thank you, Fission. Thank you, <laughs> much appreciated. Uh, Cantabrian, on the topic of undervaluing work, totally agree. It becomes a, r a race to the bottom if we undercharge. I've have had a couple of experiences where people want the want the world, but only want to pay very little. Yes, that is. Uh, Sadly, that is very um, um, common as well. And to me, it's absolutely mind-blowing. Uh, it has happened to me as well. Uh, um, I'm, of course, I'm not going to mention names, uh, <clears throat> but um, it was one guy uh, that had a very... Uh, it was for a card game uh, project, and they... And one of these things that to me is just absolutely uh, mind blowing. They they have the nerves or ignorance that still trying to sell you that project as yeah, and it's gonna be so ambitious, and we are gonna sell so many so much of these and that, and it's gonna be so successful. Blah 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 blah. But still, we're gonna pay you this very little. And to me, it's just like, so you are telling me to my face that you are, I mean, potentially you are going to become rich and you're telling me to my face that the work that you are going to use from me to to get so much money, still you're going to pay me shit. It's just like, to me, it's just insane. But okay, aside from that, is that, okay, so you have this extremely, extremely ambitious project and you want to do this and that, as you are saying, Cantabrian, that they, they want the world, right? So they are aiming for the very, very best. And then they come with a <clears throat> excuse, but say, but we have a very limited budget, so I can only pay you this. And to me, once again, it's like, are, in which world are we living in? I mean... Okay, fine. I can understand if you have a very a very limited uh, budget. That it's uh, that's how life is, and it's uh, yeah. So then, but you you cannot be pretending to to have the most ambitious project and still don't have the the, the money to to invest uh, in it. Uh, so if you want the best, you need to pay for having the best. But you cannot, you know, that's how, that's how things should be. Uh, and is 
mind-boggling to me that there are still some people around there that they they don't understand that. Um, so the excuse of the budget, it's uh, yeah. So I mean, once again, it's like okay, you have a lower budget, then. Okay, lower your expectations and the, the scope for your project. And then it's a completely leg legitimate uh, argument, right? It's like, and then I can understand and and then it's fine. But if, um, yeah. So to, to me, it's um, it, it makes uh, boil my uh, blood, these type of things. Um, and of course, the typical thing for uh, working uh, for <laughs> the classic uh, of uh, working for <coughs> exposure. And another another thing, right? Uh, that's still classic. Uh, you wouldn't think that, uh, but this time, uh, this shouldn't be an occurrence uh, but sadly it still is um, and s and it works and it seems to work because normally it is aimed at students or people that are starting and they pray and and I use this word because it's it's totally a predatory uh, um, uh, thing to do uh, and who was it that was mentioning something on the Discord server uh, <clears throat> about certain NFT uh, projects? Uh, it was something regarding uh, you as an artist, you submit some art that they claim that you for a game that they claim that you will earn uh, things through the game uh, with your art but within the game, right? So basically they are telling you as as far as I understood, maybe I'm wrong, but that they you are working for free with the hope that what you do will make some money that it will get back to you through the game which of course I would, I would guess that it will never <laughs> do. <laughs> so it's it's again it's it's very very bad. So yes, uh, don't do that. And value your work, no matter how little experience you have as well. Um, that's another thing sometimes. People think that, yeah, but I don't have any experience. I, I haven't worked before, so it is fine. I And no, it is not. Um, still, it is not. And exposure and all is good, but still pay. And yeah, and as I was saying, sadly, it is a more common thing that you would think of nowadays. Diego, Spanish hashtag animation paid me. Let me just translate that to English so everybody understand. Uh, so Spanish hashtag animation paid me. Um, revealed that some illustrators uh, used to um, 
to um my goodness what was the word uh to <clears throat> to charge between one hundred dollars and uh, four thousand dollars but what is the the usual uh how much can somebody ask for and uh and hope to get uh, talking about those nu numbers. Uh, Diego. Um, well, again, it depends because as I was saying, it's it, if it's, I mean, technically, if you are doing uh, a symbol like this for some kind of text and it's, uh, I don't know, a tiny thing or face, that's still an, an illustration. And and of course, that's not going to be the same as making an illustration for a cover of a very famous edition of a book or something. So that's that can go in, in very low, uh, but not right. So that would be very little uh, uh, to charge in comparison. So it, it's... It's very difficult to say like this in abstract because it can, I mean, the range is so wide of, of the type of work that you are asked to. So in order to have a conversation in those terms, we need to speak from with about something specific uh, because illustration as a whole can be so many different type of uh, gigs or works, right? And, um, so yeah, it is difficult to say really, um, what I could say, for instance, is like, let's say for type of uh, magic to gathering uh, type of illustrations and on, on that line of work. Also the, the prices varied uh, quite a lot depending on the artist and uh, the um, complexity of the illustration that they are asking. But uh, yeah, the, the price for by illustration can, I mean, I'm not an expert on it, uh, but from what I have seen and my experience, it can go from $1,000 to $2,000 for per illustration. And maybe more. I, I don't know. I think it depends also. If the artist is very famous and very renowned, then they probably will pay more. So it's, it's difficult to say. Um, <clears throat> I mean, again, let's say that a a a, a book about uh, uh, cooking recipes, and they want to have a very tiny, cute illustration of uh, some of of the the um, the food um, that will that would be very simple and thing, then you are not going to charge and the price for that is not going to be the same as uh, again, like, um, uh, an illustration for the cover of a very renowned internationally, uh, magazine, uh, or something, you know, so. Cantabrian. One of them was based in North America, a studio doing quite well and had a sizable YouTube channel. Yet what they were offering to pay worked out less the minimum wage in the UK. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Uh, yeah. I mean, again, there is... Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. Uh, you are always going to find... Uh, agents uh, to call something like individuals or corporations or that are gonna uh, do that way 
Um, so that's why it is important that as artists, we have the responsibility of knowing uh, how to charge and to value our work. Because if not, you are making it very easy for these uh, agents, uh, right? To And to be honest, uh, I have to say that, uh, uh, ironically, in the long term, that also something that is, uh, and what's the word, uh, playing against these uh, companies because they paid, for, they get what they for what they paid uh, as well. Um, uh, and it really shows sometimes, uh, right? Uh, because the the real experience and and valuable artists, uh, they will not um, go for uh, working for those companies. Um, and then the the result and the 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 art, if we're speaking about art, really shows. That is, uh, yeah. And on the on the other hand, that's how it explains the fact that then many successful uh, studios and uh, companies they still pay very high rates because they understand that they must pay for the value that they are I mean for the value um, that they are expecting um, and they are successful Uh, David, um, we have Miguel, depende. Yeah, okay, we are talking to him, yes. Mm. Uh, David, sorry, I, um, I, could you try to, um, if, if you don't mind to, um, to write in, in English, I'm just saying, since there are plenty of people that don't speak or uh, understand Spanish, so just to, uh, so everybody can understand uh, what everybody is saying, um, Sorry, I don't want to pick on you, uh, so it's, uh, it's just totally fine, but... So we, I mean, we don't um, marginalize a part of the, of the people on the chat. So, yeah. Uh, Jacob. Um, whoa, I would love to support that. Painting Space Marines is like a lost art of the good old days of book illustration. Adrian Smith is a living legend and even he doesn't seem to do it a lot uh, nowadays. Uh, what do you mean supporting what? Um, 
but uh, yes, Space Marines is uh, it is a challenge, and Adrian Smith is definitely a living legend. Uh, yeah, and I don't know if you are aware if you like uh, his work of his uh, comic uh, Rage. Have you seen it? It's a masterpiece. It's very special uh, comic. It's not like the the typical mainstream type of a comic, but it's an absolute masterpiece. And uh, if you like uh, Adrian Smith work, and of course, I mean, if you like his work, of course you you like Warhammer and uh, 40k and and, for, and fantasy. You will like the comic, I promise you. It has nothing to do with Warhammer, but uh, yeah, <laughs> there are similarities, or uh, yeah, and it's absolutely amazing. I love it. Um, many of the frames are just paintings and uh, so evocative and so yeah, fantastic in a nightmarish way. <laughs> But uh, fantastic. Ponzus. Now I'm collecting very few space marines instead of, uh, uh, to paint. And uh, not uh, to play anymore. All right, I see. Well, of course, I understand. Uh, same here. <laughs> well, I don't even collect in anything. <clears throat> um, but yeah. Uh, Philip, uh, merci, merci beaucoup. Uh, thanks. Um. Do I paint on a Wacom uh, Cintiq? No, I do not. Uh, it's just a regular uh, uh, tablet. It is uh, Intuos uh, Pro. I never been too fan of the Cintiqs. Um, back. At the time where they came up, they were very uh, irradiated a lot of heat from the screen uh, in one hand, and I found that very not uh, very comfortable because after some hours, it it was yeah, it, it was it as if you were uh, painting on an old monitor, um, and then just the posture of the body and yeah, I. No, and <clears throat> um, I know that that's not an issue anymore and stuff. But yeah, I, I, uh, I work just fine with a regular tablet, and uh, yeah. So yeah, you know, this, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> the short answer, no. Pontus. All NFT projects are pretty much scams. Uh, sure, you can make money scamming people. There is a lot of hype uh, for it. Um, we have huge discussions about them and NFTs. And blah, 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 blah. We have huge discussions about them and NFTs is a solution looking for problems uh, to solve. Yes, I'm... I'm, I think like anything that is completely new, uh, I'm not married to any idea or position really. I'm, I'm still a little bit on the middle. Um, I see the good things about the NFTs, but as I, a new thing, um, obviously it's used for nefarious, um, uh, activities and intents and uh, yeah but i think that there's still room for uh, good stuff so yeah i don't know in terms of projects related to nfts i, I haven't followed much but yeah 
to me at least i'm a little bit always on the fence uh when it comes to that uh, like projects uh, with nfts and uh yeah I'm sure there must be a lot of well. I'm sure there, there is a lot of leg legitimate and 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 fine things, but uh, I also feel that there is a, a a lot of people that jump into the train and hype that are just trying to make easy money by scamming other people. Lighting bug. Uh, love your art and your channel. You really capture the coolness of uh, 40k and its factions. Wish I could watch more of the live streams, but keep it up. They're great work. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, that is very kind to say. Um, uh, thank you very much. And welcome uh, to the stream. Uh, I hope that you can uh, join often. If... Uh, if you choose so. Jacob, um, support your tutorial. Aha, uh -huh, all right. Uh, and yes, I love hate. <laughs> what a nice uh, sentence, right? I love hate. <laughs> I wish we could uh, just sit one day and uh, lean and uh, learn from uh, him. What a human. Talked with him at IFCC some years back. He was at IFCC? Wow. I did not know that. What a shame uh, that I wasn't then uh, at that I IFCC. Shit. Uh, I would call him a grandmaster. Yes, he's, I mean, he's, uh, he's a beast. Yes. Uh, Definitely. And he's a super nice guy as well. I, I concur. But yeah, th w when was it? What what year, what uh, IFCC was that? That hit so cool. <laughs> Man, talking about IFCC, I hope that they... Uh, they continue organizing them. Um, I hope that Marco decides to uh, continue. I know Marco, he has mentioned a long time ago that he uh, has been lurking around the stream from time to time. If you are listening, Marco, you must continue IFCC. I know it is a uh, pain in the ass to organize and a lot of work and stress, but it's so good for the community. It is, uh, yeah. So kudos to you, man, and everybody um, that is that helps uh, to make it happen. So yeah. David, you should try the new syntax. They are amazing. Yeah, I know they are. Um, yes, I yes I, I know. Uh, uh, back when I, I was still uh, working uh, on the studio, uh, I got the chance to try some of the new ones. They were nice, definitely. But the thing is that I don't need I don't need it. I feel so extremely comfortable with my regular tablet that I don't feel the need. Um, so, uh, yes. Uh, Pontus, yeah, I agree. There could always come something nice of NFTs in the future. And yes, some projects are positive. Just be wary about them in general. Yes, exactly. Yes, that's kind of my attitude. I'm, I'm always like on the fence uh, in terms of being 
careful. Uh, but I, yeah, I think there is also space for uh, good legitimate uh, stuff going on. But, but yeah, it, like anything, you need to be very careful and be responsible. Uh, <clears throat> Um, going back to the idea of how to reaching um, Henry Cavill, uh, does any of you guys have any idea, any clever idea of, of how we could achieve that? Aside from the obvious of, of making a lot of noise on social media, just with the hope that he will decide to click at some point uh, something <laughs> I mean, because just imagine how many times I mean these famous uh, figures uh, how many times they must be tagged by random people and stuff like that so they must be completely filtering away Oh, everything just as by default Uh, Jacob, IFCC 2016, if I remember correctly. Um, it was amazing. Met a lot of heroes that even the cancelled famous illustrator was there. You know who? Ah, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Poof. What a character. I have never had the, <laughs> the pleasure to meet in person. Um... <clears throat> I have heard through the years uh, a lot of things. <laughs> uh, yeah. To be honest, I mean, yeah, I never understood why he was so. Uh, he has all had so much success uh, because I think he's pretty. I mean, of course, I know this about it's subjective, uh, but I think he's. I mean, he's not a bad artist, but. Uh, I don't think he's at all that special or yeah, I don't know. Anyway, yeah. Um let's not talk about this person. <laughs> uh but yeah, I think I actually went to the next IFCC. I think it was on 2017 or two maybe the 2018 was my first IFCC. Um, uh, yeah, such a cool event. Um, yes. Uh, David, look at 
direct uh, massage. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to make, I had to do it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like uh, <laughs> a direct massage to Henry Cavill will would work. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No. Now, seriously, uh, direct message. Uh, I think it's the same thing. Of course, I would try uh, when I I have the. <laughs> the illustration uh, ready but it's the same thing they must get bombarded by randoms about anything right so i mean maybe i'm wrong maybe they actually uh, or he actually read all the direct messages who knows uh, but i would be surprised if he do i mean just i mean just imagine the, the level of insanity the people that they follow that follow him and all the nuts messages that they might get and yeah so uh me blurred send him a print yes sure but where um <clears throat> i mean that's another thing that i'm pretty sure they are very secretive about where they live uh, so i don't think you will find uh, their address uh, that easily Jacob, uh, maybe trying to contact him uh, through CG Red Project. Do you know anyone there? They probably have a line of contact with him. Well, I yes, I actually do have many people. Um, I know many people that work there, but I really, really doubt that that would uh, help anyway. Uh, <clears throat> I mean... Because I know also how things work in a big studio, and it, it's not—it doesn't work that way. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So no, I I don't think that would um, uh, work at all. Uh, Cantabrian Jacob's idea seems pretty good. All right. Contact him via a studio, or would any of your contacts in Games Workshop be able to help? Well, still... <laughs> I mean, I think that's very unlike unlikely. Again, I think th the thing with uh, CD, uh, blah, blah, uh, CD Red Pro... Oh my goodness. CD Red Project, I think they the contact they might ha have if anything it's very specific with uh, very very few persons uh and i s even still doubt that they even have any contact with him because they don't they haven't they don't have any as far as i know any reason to have uh, any contact uh, with him so yeah that in about that particular studio with Game Workshop, still the same thing. Why would he have a contact with Games Workshop or them with him? Uh, I, f I seriously doubt it. Um, I mean, I might be completely wrong, so I, I'm not dismissing it. Uh, it's just that I, I, I don't see how that could be. Uh, if you took let's say if i i contacted the people that work for the witcher um, uh, tv series then that makes more sense right because it's a more direct line of uh, um, co connect or blah, a more direct connection uh, through him right because he's working on that uh, project but um, i don't know
Lucius, maybe reaching out to his less famous friends. Uh, one of them might be kind enough to send him a picture of the painting in a DM. Could be stall carish, uh, though I don't know. Well, I have no idea who are his friends. Is that a, is that public uh, public knowledge? Uh, <laughs> uh, David, uh, sorry, uh, David. <laughs> uh, any tips for painting faces? Uh, yes, uh, practice a lot from live um, and be very observant. Yeah, just like that, like a, a fast answer. Uh, we could talk about that uh, on a later stream because I, I have to actually uh, finish. Um, it's already my time to, to go to sleep. <laughs> As a good boy. Uh, but yeah, as I said, I I'm, I'm have a lot of work to do. Captain, uh, well, Captain, oh my goodness. Uh, Commander Dante um, is, uh, yeah, he's not going to let me sleep properly either. So I need to uh, get as much sleep as I can. Um, so yeah. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Let me stop the recording. Um, Cantabrian, I did a painting of Lemon Ross based on the actor Arun Tempte, who was in the Last Kingdom. By chance, I tagged him in it and he acknowledged it. My day was made, uh, to say the least. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, that I can understand that. That must be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, the... Of course, I, I I I can be lucky in that way, but once again, I think the uh, celebrity uh, of the st statues of uh, Henry Cavill, and I think he has millions of people following him. You know, I, again, the, the the insanity of of the numbers of of tags and and messages that they he must get is insane so to manage to to, to get past that filter pff, i don't know i mean i will definitely try to do and as every time i have uh, posted a work in progress only in instagram to be fair um, but also I, that's where i have the biggest reach anyway um, i tag him uh, tag him but um, I'm not sure if that's gonna help I don't know um, Mibler try to blow up on Twitter yes I I, I will try yes um, I mean I barely use Twitter and uh, I have a very 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 small uh, <clears throat> following there uh, I mean it's just like microscopic so but yeah may maybe um, <clears throat> I mean as soon as I finish the the piece I will try to try as many uh, social media platforms as possible and try to yeah make a, as much noise as I can with the hope if that kind of brute force uh, and try to brighten off so uh, it can be noticed, but I don't know. Uh, that's the only thing that I have in mind. So that's why I'm, I'm kind of asking for uh, uh, suggestions, uh, which by the way, thanks a lot uh, already uh, by, by uh, trying to brainstorm uh, ideas for it. <clears throat> Uh, Pontus, he has an agent uh, named Samantha. Uh, I will start with her. Yeah, that's actually could uh, 
could be a clever way to do it uh, perhaps yes uh, then it would be yeah then I would have to research who she is then uh, Samantha Samantha Watts how do you know that is that I mean you s <laughs> I mean you said that you can uh, just speak directly to him uh, so <laughs> just call him man and just say hey i have my buddy there miguel he can uh sam uh you might have uh, the best uh, 40k work i have ever seen well man uh, sam uh, thanks a lot much appreciated that it's very very kind to say but uh, I disagree with you. I think uh, I am definitely not the best, uh, for sure. But I, I still appreciate it a lot, uh, uh, sincerely. Uh, but yeah, definitely not. Uh, David Luca, off topic. Do you know personally Jaime Martinez? He's an artist for Game Workshop. He he's so good. Yes, he is. Uh, he's fantastic, and he's uh, a great guy. But no, I don't have the pleasure to know him personally. Uh, we haven't met in person, but yes, I know him, and we have talked uh, quite a lot through the internet. But uh, but no, we haven't met in person. Uh, but yeah, and he's extremely talented. Um, yes. Cantabrian, my train of thoughts with Games Workshop idea was that as he is a huge fan of uh, Warhammer 40k, it might catch his attention if they contacted him. Granted, it is a huge stretch. Yeah, that's what I mean. And uh, sp and I don't know. Since it's just a uh, uh, piece of fan art as well, to be honest, I, I don't want to bother Games Workshop with something like that. You know what I mean? It's just... Uh, yeah. David, I found this in Google. Is it true? We will never know. Oh. <laughs> well, I... Well, man... I, I don't know. Uh, maybe it was that easy. <laughs> Just Googling it. <laughs> if that is the case, uh, I would thought that uh, they will try to keep it as uh, secret as possible. But yeah, who knows? Uh, Lucius, yeah, if you can reach his agent, could be the most straightforward way. Yes, I, I, I think that sounds pretty uh, neat. Uh, yes, I agree. Mibert, or connect with a fan account with many followers or something. That actually, it's also a neat idea as well. Uh... Yes, yes. <clears throat> Pontus, I have her LinkedIn, but of course it would be most fun to try it on social media first. All right. Could you then send me the, the link? Um, because yes, I think that is a pretty, um, um, that's a, a good uh, um, strategy. Yes. Pontus, really? I really believed you. <laughs> How could you do that to me? <laughs> but I definitely also will definitely try to d direct massage. <laughs> uh, yes, that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> David Luca, you should try to check his profile on IMDb and uh, you may find the names of his agent. Um, yeah. 
All right, guys. Thanks a lot for all this brainstorm. Uh, much appreciated. But I think uh, at this pace, uh, it's going to take me still some time to finish the, the illustration. <laughs> um, but yeah, always a pleasure uh, being with you and talking to you. Uh, yeah, it's like, it's great fun. And um, yes, see you next Tuesday. Uh, hopefully, uh, actual yes, 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 yes. Yeah, sorry. Yes, next Tuesday, same time. Uh, so yes, take care, stay safe and healthy, and uh, yeah, paint and draw a lot. All right, <laughs> take care, and thanks again for all the suggestions uh, for reaching Mister Cavill. I will uh, start to. Uh, explore uh, alternatives uh, for the future. All right. Now, bye-bye. Good night, everybody, or good day, depending on where you are. Bye-bye.